Well, I finally had to come home to Las Vegas. And as much as I like being out on the road, man, I have to admit, it does feel really good to be home. I had a lot of, or I still have a lot of catch up work to do while I'm here, but I'm taking a quick break, just kicking back at my desk here with an ice cold cocktail in this awesome glass I got from the Los Angeles Adventurers Club. Look at this. My sister and I went to one of their meetings back in, oh gosh, February, I think. And oh my God, first of all, it's a club of adventurers that have been meeting since 1921 in this really funky old building in downtown LA. And it's one of those deals where it was like gentlemen only, especially like back in the day, it was all these like heads of movie studios and moguls like you know those old school adventure type guys that would like take a boat down the nile and the place was full of like stuffed animal heads and you know those like those umbrella stands they used to make out of elephant legs that you would see in the far side cartoons well they actually had one of those there this place was a trip now they allow women in i think only on certain days of the month i don't know it's open to the public one day a month uh, they have speakers or maybe it's one day a week. I don't know. Anyway, they have featured guest speakers. And well, unfortunately, Mad Mike Hughes, the, the guy who went up in the rocket and passed away recently, he uh, he was the featured speaker that night, which is why my sister and I went. And that's where we got to know him. And we sat at his table, had dinner with him. And God, he was just a wonderful guy. R.I.P. But anyway, look at the back of this cup. Look, here's the toast they used to say at the Adventurers Club. To adventure the shadow of every red-blooded man. To the game, to every lost trail, lost cause, and lost comrade, to gentlemen adventurers. Uh, I mean, I guess I'll just have to consider myself a gentleman. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, like I said, I'm back home now, but I was gone for over a month. I mean, my plan was to just, well, stay up north as long as I could because, well, I happened to see in the news there was a there still is a crazy heat wave going on in the southwestern and I think southern United States. I mean, I don't know if you saw on TV, but it was 128 degrees in Death Valley last week. Okay. And Vegas usually doesn't get as hot as Death Valley, but it gets up there. In fact, it's 110 degrees today. But I was trying to avoid all this heat. I typically leave for the whole summer. And even though my plans have been sort of topsy turvy this year because of the um, coronavirus pandemic, well, I still plan to just sort of hang out up north in the mountains as long as possible and sort of wait until the heat wave broke before I came back down here. But unfortunately, I couldn't delay my return any longer because there was so much interesting stuff up where I was and I shot so much friggin' video last week. I mean, I swear, I saw so much interesting stuff. I ran out of storage space on all my devices. And things got so tight that I had to free up some space on my phone. My phone actually wasn't functioning properly because there was just no free space on it. And so I was trying to free up some space on my phone, delete some files that I didn't need. Well, guess what? I accidentally deleted all the footage I shot on Sunday. Ugh! Now, just so you know, I do back everything up. Like my habit when I'm out in the field is I go out and I shoot everything on my cell phone uh, and then I shoot stuff on my GoPro and then I recently got a drone, so I've got three sources of footage. Well, every night when I get to camp, wherever I'm gonna make camp that night, I take out my laptop, I take out my external hard drive, if not two external hard drives, and I back everything up onto those. So that way, if something was to happen to my phone, you know, I'm not gonna lose everything. Unfortunately, I'm not able to save this stuff to the cloud, you know, like Google Photos or whatever, because I'm usually in an area with uh, no cell signal, so I can't upload footage to the cloud. So I transfer it all, I drag it over and put it on a hard drive. Well, guess what? <laughs> I got to camp Sunday night and I don't know, I think it's because uh, this I got, I got a drone, like I just said, and it's kind of new to me. It's an, in a new folder and I don't know, I was trying to free up some space on my phone. I thought I was just deleting the drone stuff because I had already backed that up, but somehow it ended up deleting all the footage I shot all day before I was able to back it up. So ugh, it was pretty frustrating, but I mean, it's the ultimate first world problem. So I realized that and I just tried to be Zen about it and look at it as an opportunity, you know, this way. Well, I already know what I shot. It'll be easy to go back and I can use this as an opportunity to shoot everything again and better this time. 
I felt like I was in the movie Groundhog Day because I drove back the exact same way I did on Sunday, on Monday, did everything the same, shot everything over again, and well, I burned up another entire tank of gas. So it was kind of an expensive mistake, especially because I also busted <laughs> My passenger side rearview mirror. Oh, man. It's a long story and it's actually embarrassing. And frankly, well, it was it was my fault. Whatever the case, I broke my passenger side mirror, crumbled it into a million pieces. Fortunately, the plastic frame and everything was fine. It's just this pane of heated glass that needs to be replaced. So I'm already on that. I went to AutoZone and ordered the appropriate shape thing. So I should have that in time for my next adventure because I'm planning to leave here again. <laughs> And well, hopefully by Tuesday to go on a, I'm going on an expedition into central Nevada with Larry, my friend, Larry, if you've watched any of the videos I did with Larry or you watch Larry's channel, well, we're getting back together again. And well, golly, got to have the mirror fixed by then. But anyway, even with the broken mirror, I considered just staying out in the field because I mean, it's legal to drive as long as you have two rear view mirrors, I think. And I did have the one inside the car and the one on the driver's side. So well, I wasn't going to let a little thing like a busted mirror stop me until real disaster struck and I ran out of clean underwear. <laughs> so then I had no choice but to go home. Or did I? In a world where the thermometer in Death Valley read 126 degrees, one woman was on a mission to avoid the desert heat. Traversing the mountains and highways of the north, biding her time, until one day, she ran out of clean underwear. The desperate battle between driver's seat upholstery and swamp ass has a new hero. No panties, no problem. Going commando. Coming soon to theaters in shady parts of town near you. <laughs> yeah, I know I could have just gone to a laundromat or I could have just gone commando, whatever. But I don't know. It just seemed like between the broken mirror and running out of storage space and deleting all that footage and then running out of clean underwear, the universe was telling me that I needed to go home. I mean, I knew I had a mountain of mail waiting for me and well, I needed to get a smog check, you know, renew my registration. Uh, well, I needed to resupply. I had a bunch of stuff to do anyway. But anyway, when I did finally get back, it was hot as heck. I mean, I got back pretty late in the evening. It was like 10 p.m. and it was still 100 degrees outside. Oh. And it was weird too. Like I took a quick cruise down the strip the other night to see like is anybody really coming to Vegas right now? I mean, what with this virus going around and half of the hotels are still closed. I was curious. So I took a quick, quick drive down the strip and it was surreal, man. I, I guess because half the hotels are still closed, a lot of the neon lights actually were out. And I don't know, normally at this time of year, especially, you know, Caesar's Palace is like the middle of everything, all the action on the strip. Normally there's like hundreds of people walking along the street, like carrying those big drinks, there's music blaring, there's just all kinds of stuff going on. And it was really kind of, well, it was kind of depressing and surreal, man. There, I mean, there were still people straggling along, wearing masks, like trying to do Vegas, but man, I don't know, it just, it didn't look like very much fun. And it was, it was pretty depressing because, I mean, they're trying. They even put a, I saw in the news, they even put a mask on the Statue of Liberty in front of the New York, New York Hotel. But here at my house, everything is actually uh, pretty good. Uh, it was nice to come in and feel the air conditioned coolness. I mean, even though I was camping up north where I had been camping the last couple of days, oof, it was over 100 degrees there too. So I, every night I would have to go up into the mountains and try to find a place at elevation where I could camp and hopefully one that had cell signal because, you know, I really like to be able to catch up on my email when I'm at camp. But it's hard to find a place that's at elevation and has cell signal in the middle of nowhere. So it did get a bit tiresome and well, I guess there is something to be said for being at home in the big city. And as a special bonus, I also noticed when I first walked in my uh, door from my car, the whole house was really clean, like sparkling clean. And well, that's not always the case when I get home from a trip, <laughs> you know, you know, how male roommates can be. So I thought, I wonder if Gloria is back. I don't know if you remember from last summer, I made a video where my roommate had a friend from Uganda named Gloria that stayed with us for a while. 
<laughs> and she was awesome uh, house guest because she's very clean and tidy and was always cleaning the kitchen and you know giving the dog baths and like just awesome person well I thought I noted the mark of Gloria and then when I went to pet my dog I noticed that he was really clean and smelled good and felt soft and then well it sealed the deal when I went outside to hang up a blanket and I saw a little hoodie that belonged to her hanging on the clothesline she's back I guess because of the virus situation she can't really go back to Uganda either right now um so i told her she was welcome to stay here as long as she wanted because well not only did she keep the house really clean but well she's also really good to my dog fred and as a matter of fact my dog fred he didn't even come out to greet me when i got home like i said i got home kind of late at night and i guess gloria was uh, in my roommate's bedroom sleeping and well apparently the dog likes to sleep with gloria and why not man she takes all the care of him look ah fred you love gloria don't you Yes, you do. He is really soft, though. She gave him a bath. She puts, like, she uses human shampoo and conditioner on him. That's why he's so soft. Aw, oh, Fred. Aw, oh, mister. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> he's wagging his tail. Yay! So, anyway, like I said, uh, I told Gloria she was welcome to stay here as long as she wanted. Um, but I feel like, I think she does really want to get back to Uganda because I didn't realize this about Gloria. She actually... Uh, runs or helps run an orphanage in Uganda and they have like 20 kids between the ages of I think she said 2 and 14 or 15 so 20 pretty young kids that she's at least partially responsible for and she said she talks to them on WhatsApp every night and you know she's still managing running things but man it's got to be really tough for her I know she's looking forward to getting back to them so hopefully that works out for her. but yeah speaking of orphanages in Africa that definitely puts into perspective all my first world problems like accidentally deleting my footage and you know breaking my mirror so i guess hey man i'll get it all taken care of one task at a time so even though i've only been back gosh i think like a couple days man i've been so busy catching up on stuff like like i said i had to get a smog check i had to renew my registration i had to go find a mirror and then i also had a giant stack of fan mail you know, I have a P.O. box where people can send me things, and oh my god, you guys were... I couldn't believe it. You guys were so generous. I got some amazing stuff. Now, I don't usually talk too much about all the gifts I get, and I don't do, like, unboxing videos, you know, stuff like that, because, I don't know, I feel like it comes off as sort of boasting. Like, oh, I'm so popular, look what people sent me. But, I don't know, I feel like these people put so much thought into these gifts that... I don't know, I thought it might be cool to show you guys uh, some of the stuff I got. I mean, this is not representative of normal. <laughs> this was like a bumper crop because I was gone so long. So there's a lot of stuff here, but check this out. Okay, I tried to, I don't know, man. I tried to arrange it all, but it's just, it's a nightmare. So I'm just, I'll start over here. This guy named Al sent me a bunch of amazing jewelry. Like, look at this cool horse pendant. And there's um, matching earrings too. In fact, he sent me a bunch a bunch, bunch, bunch of pairs of amazing, beautiful earrings. Al, if you're watching this, thank you so much. I mean, I haven't been dressing up much lately because of the quarantine, but looking at all this sparkly jewelry makes me definitely want to get dressed up. And then everything uh, that's piled up here is actually sitting on this really cool camp rocking chair. It's a foldable rocking chair for camping that was sent to me by uh, Denny. And Denny has been sending me really cool things for a long time. In fact, Denny also sent me four pairs of jeans. Thank you, Denny. As always, I appreciate your generosity. I feel like you're trying to tell me something though, like put some pants on, lady. <laughs> okay, and then there were some other really cool clothes here that I got. <laughs> I gotta show you guys this. I hope this isn't boring. I mean, if it is, you can just, you know, watch something else. But look at this t-shirt. Carolina burger in L Lenore. I don't know how you pronounce the name of the town, Lenore, but this was sent to me by uh, Tom and Kim. <laughs> I love it, man. I bet the place has awesome friggin' burgers. Oh my god, this one here. <laughs> this is from Jeff, and it's a testicle festival <laughs> t-shirt from this Round the Bend Steakhouse. This year has been nuts. <laughs> Boy, I'll say, but look at the back. So it's from this place called Round the Bend Steakhouse. I'm not sure where that is. I think he lives in, I wanna say like Nebraska maybe? Oh yeah, Nebraska. Anyway, so it's in Nebraska, Round the Bend Steakhouse. I just think it's funny because the steer has a mask on and it says RTB Strong, Round the Bend Strong. 
And then that says America Strong. Oh, look, 2020, it was the 27th annual testicle festival. Ugh. Community spread these nuts. Oh, my God. Like COVID-19 edition. <laughs> I friggin' love stuff like this. Oh, I should also note that the same person, Jeff, also sent me this awesome Connecticut National Guard backpack. And that's super useful because it's got all kinds of side pockets and, well, it's just, it's really well built. It's an actual National Guard backpack. So thank you so much. And then I also got a tank top for this Tom Rivers Backroads USA YouTube channel. I guess it's youtube.com slash travel, traveling Tom. So that was really cool. Uh, well, I got these awesome boots that are like, you know, those fancy uh, Jesus sandals that bury the Australian beast wears? Well, I thought I'll go one up on him and get a pair of uh, Ugg type boots that have crosses embroidered into them. And these are beautiful. They really did uh, a nice job with the embroidery of this. And these were sent by Steven and they also came with a pair of earrings. So thank you, Steven. Oh, and before I forget, I also got this cool hat from Gabe says the liberty i'm not sure what that is but it's an eagle on a motorcycle and that's pretty badass and it's the only kind of hat i like to wear which is the old-fashioned trucker cap with foam in the front and uh, plastic mesh in the back i think i went into detail about that in my uh, video that i made at the world's biggest truck stop like i have this weird <laughs> like self-conscious paranoia that my head is too small for my body so that's why i only like these old-fashioned foam top trucker hats because they make my head look bigger and interestingly, Gabe said, oh, he has the opposite problem. He feels like the foam hats make his head look, head look too big. So he offered to send me this one that he had. And well, now I have it. So thanks, Gabe. What else do we have here? Oh, my fan Blake from Texas sent me this delicious looking Texas pecan or pecan, I guess, depending on how you pronounce it, coffee. Man, I cannot wait to try this because I love pecan flavored anything. It says it has notes of butter, pecan, and toast. Ugh. Yeah, you know I love my coffee, and well, now that I'm at home, I can actually have real, real ground coffee. You know, no, no more of that instant stuff like on the road. Although that being said, somebody and there was no name in with this. Somebody sent me this tiny single serving French press. How cute is this? So actually, I could bring that Texas pecan coffee camping with me and make myself a cup uh, in this little tiny French press. And you know what I could use to boil the water for when I make this coffee? Okay, unfortunately, this also didn't have a gift receipt or anything, but it's friggin' amazing. Check this out. First of all, it's from a company called Prepper's Peak. And what it is, is it's a, a solar water boiler. So you can sanitize water, like if you're in an area where you don't know if the drinking water is safe. It's a glass, uh, like carafe that you fill with water and then you screw the lid back on and then you open you open these uh side panels up which are mirrored let me see if i can sort of zoom out so you can see this better and they reflect heat into this central glass carafe and it's supposedly a boil water in i think 20 minutes so you could sanitize it if you want to make sure if it's safe to drink or you know i was thinking for my own purposes i could just fill it up with water uh well, I could probably fill it up with water and just leave it on the top of my car overnight and let it heat up. So that way when I wake up in the morning, I'll have a hot flask of boiling water ready to go to pour into my <laughs> French press that's full of delicious Texas pecan coffee. How about that? And all of it was gifts from awesome people who watch my channel. I, I can't say enough about how cool my viewers are. You guys are awesome. Whoever sent me this thing, Thank you so much. I'm really looking forward to trying this out in the field and I will definitely be making a product review video about it. I can drink my coffee out of one of these really cool insulated thermoses I got from Scott in Lexington, Kentucky. He sent me four thermoses from the local co-op grocery store there. He said there's a really cool grocery store in Lexington where you can get um, local foods. So he sent me a bunch of uh, thermal insulated mugs to pass out to my friends. So, you know, Larry, my sister, whoever. And then he also sent me some really cool, well, he sent me this amazing knife. I don't know if you can see this, but it says apocalypse survivor. It's basically like a zombie apocalypse knife. How cool is that? And he sent me some sunglasses. Now this pair here, I guess, especially polarized uh, for wearing on like a rainy or foggy day when visibility is poor. But then this pair here is just for funsies. <laughs> Love these sunglasses, Scott. Thank you. 
Here's a cute little sticker I got from the Angel Fire Resort in New Mexico from Chris. Thank you, Chris. I love stickers. And then look at this, this really cool hand-tooled leather keychain. This guy made me Ron. Ronald, thank you. That is beautiful. And the fact that you went through all that trouble to make that for me, that is cool. Oh, I got a really cool Merle Haggard CD from my friends at Brenner Shocks. They send me a CD every month, so I've got a really good collection of music. And, well, Merle Haggard, he's a classic. We all love Merle Haggard. Oh, and here I got from Ralph in Phoenix two mystery CDs. I haven't had a chance to put these in my um, in my CD-ROM yet and hear what's on them. So I'm curious. It could be music. It could be paranormal stuff, podcasts. Who knows? Looking forward to finding out. Oh, and then this here is really cool. This is from uh, someone named Lizzie who lives here in Vegas. And it's called a My ID Sleeve. Look at this. I mean, I've never heard of anything like this. Basically, it's a little... Um, like a sleeve that fits right over the band of your smartwatch. You know, like I always wear this Fitbit watch, so it would just go over the band of it. It's this QR code so that if you do like pass out or something in the mountains and have to be rescued, but you're unconscious, well, whoever finds you, if they happen to see that you're wearing this My ID on your smartwatch, they can scan this QR code with their phone and well, you have to go online first and fill out a profile, but it'll list your, you know, any allergies you have, your emergency contact, like all the important information uh, in your health profile. So I need to log into the website and fill this out and then I'll slip it right over the band of my smartwatch. And then that way, well, if I do end up meeting some kind of unfortunate accident when I'm out in the backcountry, if somebody finds me, they'll know better how to help me. So I thought that was pretty cool. It's called My ID Sleeve. Okay, now this is a bunch of food, which is always welcome, sent to me by Kevin. And oh, he sent some really good stuff this time. I got some rice and some Thai vegetable curry and all these different kinds of Mexican cowboy pinto beans, all these beans, just the kind of food I love to eat that I just boil in my little pot on my camp stove. And then let's see what else. Oh, my my uh, fan Marco sent me these. These are supposed to be amazing hiking socks I read about online. It's by this brand called Darn Tough. And they're supposed to be the best, most durable, most comfortable hiking socks ever. I was reading about them on a backpacking blog and well, you know, I, I don't like wearing shoes, boots, but you know, I don't often wear shoes, but when I do, I want to wear comfortable socks. So I'm really looking forward to testing these out on my next hike. So thank you very much, Marco. Marco also sent me a shutter release for my camera because uh, I still want to do those Dallas Cowboy cheerleader photos. I'll be honest, I did do a photo shoot in the costume uh, about a month ago when I was here last, but the, the cable release I had for my camera wasn't the right one. I don't know. I Somehow I screwed up, so... This is a remote control shutter release. So that way I can put on the outfit and have all my lights and everything set up. And all I have to do is hit the thing and pose. So it'll make it a lot easier. So thank you, Marco. Okay, now this package here was really cool. It's from Loyal. And Loyal not only sent these beautiful earrings, but look at these. These are um, home, well, I don't know, homemade, crocheted uh, table runner. Beautiful table runner. This was all done by hand. And then this, this is a collar, look. You know, like you could wear it on top of a dress, kind of that really cool, fancy old time, almost like Linda Ronstadt look. Love it, thank you, Loyal. And even better, look what else was in the package. Dog treats, and these aren't just any dog treats, let me tell you something. These are like 100% pure beef liver dog treats for dogs. <laughs> Fred's kind of choosy about his dog treats. He doesn't like all dog treats. But I think he likes these. Let's see. Uh-oh. Look. <laughs> Fred, you want one? Look, it's just big chunks of liver. Oh, my God. It's so gross. Get your nose out of there. Let me give you one. Hold on. Here. Oh, yeah. He loves those liver treats. These are awesome all-natural treats. So thank you, Loyal. Okay, now we got a few more things. This copy of Convoy, the movie Convoy, was sent to me and there was no name in the package, so I don't know who to thank for that, but, oh my God, look at the cover. Remember Allie McGraw? Woo, woo, Convoy. Isn't that Chris Christopherson? And then, oh my gosh, look at this book. This is amazing. This is a book about long haul trucking that was sent to me by Greg, The Brotherhood of the Wheel. This looks so interesting, man. Really can't wait to read this. Oh, okay, Raymond or Ray sent me these really interesting articles uh, about like the bristlecone pine forest. Uh, oh, the lost city of St. Thomas on Lake Mead. Uh, oh gosh, all kinds of interesting locations that I can go explore. So I'm gonna add these to my adventure file. 
And then, oh my God, look at these magazines. These are amazing. These are old time desert magazine. Okay, well, I guess it was some magazine just about the desert back in the 50s, 60s that was sent to me by Tim. And <laughs> look, at I don't know what this Mr. Peg Leg is. <laughs> I guess it's a cactus called Peg Leg. This one, oh, this one's from the 74. So, okay, one from the 70s, one from the 60s, and then one from 1958. Look at that, Desert Magazine. People have been loving the desert for all these years, and oh my God, I can't freaking wait to look through these old magazines. You know how I love my old magazines. Thank you, Tim. And then this book came all the way from Australia. Uh, John sent me this book from Australia. It's all about the Dandenong Ranges. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. A uh, book of photos of, I guess, like a kind of like a mountain range area in Australia where there's all this incredible stuff. I mean, just beautiful landscapes, abandoned old buildings, you know, mine camps. A lot of stuff very similar to the United States, Australia, uh, to the Western United States. So, yeah, I was hoping to go to Australia this summer, but unfortunately the dang virus got in the way. So, eh, I guess I'll just have to make do with looking at this awesome picture book, which, gosh, I can't believe you took the trouble to send it to me all the way from Australia. Thank you, John. And then speaking of awesome books, I got this one from Kathy. Thank you, Kathy. It's called A Last Look, and it's photos of ghost towns and abandoned places in the Sierra Nevada wilderness. Look at this. It's just like beautiful black and white photos of abandoned farms and uh, old tree stump and oh, just old uh, names carved into stuff. Just beautiful photos of all the kinds of places that I love to explore. Oh my God, I would die to find that place, whatever that is. Oh. Anyway, I know I'm gonna really enjoy looking at this book. So thank you so much for thinking of me, Kathy. And then finally, last but not least, I got this awesome Velcro Wonder Hussy patch to put on that new Velcro hat I got. I don't know if you saw, I posted about it on Facebook and Instagram, but there's this company called Slap Cap that makes caps like this, but the front is Velcro. So you can add whatever you want onto the front of it. <laughs> so the guy, I met the guy when I was staying up in Chico at a, uh, helping my friend with his knee that I was just up there a couple weeks ago. Well, there was this really cool four by four badass sprinter adventure van parked out in the parking lot. And the van was always in the parking lot. It never moved. It was always in the same spot. And both my friend and I were like, man, I wonder whose van that is. And there was like a surfboard on the top, like a kayak. And you could just tell it was, you know, somebody who really liked to adventure. And then finally, one day I happened to be coming back from an errand and met the guy whose van it was. And he turned out to be super cool. He was an electrician working uh, on the Paradise Fire, you know, that, that, that terrible fire up there a couple years ago or last year, I guess. Uh, so he was, I don't know, he had some contract with the state doing the electrical work, helping to rebuild the town. But on his time off, he cruised around in his adventure van. And then he also happened to run this this hat company. So he gave me a free hat and a bunch of stick on uh, Velcro decals like Bigfoot and a UFO and just a bunch of really cool stuff. So uh, my fan Jefferson decided to make me this Velcro Wonder Hussy patch so I can put that right on the top of the Velcro hat, which I thought was really cool. And moreover, look what else he sent me. Well, he had some really cool little stickers made up for me, which is awesome. Limited supply of those. And then look at these lanterns. These are so cool. They're like little plastic bags with like a Tiffany design on them. So I guess what you're supposed to do is fill it halfway with water. And then there's these uh, waterproof tea lights that you drop down into the bag full of water and then it like lights up and glows like a little Tiffany lamp. And there's like, I think six of them in the box. So next time I go camping, that's going to create some awesome ambience. So, wow, thank you for that Jefferson. And oh my God, everybody who sent me stuff, Thank you for everything. Uh, not only did I get all that stuff, but I also have a bunch of really cool letters that I got from people that I have to answer. So, whew, my work is cut out for me. It might take me a while to send you a thank you if you sent me any of the stuff I just showed or if you wrote me a letter, but I will get around to everyone. I'm very um, meticulous, I guess that's the word, or conscientious about thanking people for every gift that I get. Um, I mean, some of the stuff, like I said, I feel really bad. I don't know who to thank for that awesome friggin' solar thermos or the little mini French press. Gosh, if you're watching this video and you sent me one of those items, you know, just let me know. And I'm letting you know that I really appreciate your generosity because wow, like there's nothing like coming home to a mountain of packages waiting for you. It really makes you feel loved. And so I'd just like to say thanks to all of you. I'm glad everyone's enjoying my 
Well, my goofy little adventure is just bumbling along down the road of life, trying to, well, just trying to have a good day. So anyway, like I said, my plan is just to finish taking care of all this stuff, answering all this mail, you know, still got a bunch of errands to do. And then, well, supposedly I need to have it all done by Tuesday so I can head back out on the road with Larry. And it's going to be a really cool expedition that we have planned. It's a, I'm not going to give it away, but it's, it's a place that I heard about, oh gosh, over a year ago, two years maybe. And I saw a picture of it on Facebook and there was no information like where it was. They were all cagey about it. But then somebody emailed me some information fairly recently that clued me in. And now between Larry and me, we think we can figure out where this stuff is. So we're heading for the hills and well, you know, videos will be coming soon from his channel and my channel. So stay tuned for that. Now, I guess I better get down to brass tacks and start answering some of this mail and sending my thank you notes. So again, thanks to everybody who sent me stuff. Thanks to everybody for watching. And well, now you know, I'm back in Vegas again, but not for long. I'll see you on the road.